As the Concrete 5 will be released in a few days, it includes great new features and improvements. One of the most important features is the addition of a new module for the design of shear walls for the ACI 318 version 2019. This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to review this new module in ASDIP Concrete 5. We're going to know the user interface and how the module works. Let's get started. I have prepared an example just to illustrate how this new module works. The left pane in the screen is dedicated to the input, so you enter all the information in this area. The right pane is dedicated to the output, so you see the results here. In this example, I can model a wall that is 152 feet high. The unsupported height is 9.5 feet, which is corresponding to the first story, and the building has 16 stories. In this tab, the wall web, you enter all the information related to the wall itself. In this case, the wall length is 23.5 feet and the wall thickness is 24 inches. It's reinforced with two curtains with number 7 at 9 vertical bars and number 7 at 10 horizontal bars. Of course, all this information will be checked in the program. If we go to the boundary members, here you enter the information on these areas at the ends of the wall. In this case, the boundary member is 36 by 36 and is reinforced with a number 11 rebars, 8 bars at the top and bottom, which are these bars at the ends, and then 6 bars left to right, which are these bars in the middle. The ties are number 5 at 6 inches, and let's assume that every other rebar is laterally supported by cross ties. So we select the option here that every other rebar is uh, supported. If we click on the materials tab, here you specify the material properties for the concrete and for the reinforcing steel. In this case, we are using concrete uh, strength of 7.5 KSI and steel strength of 80 KSI. If we go to the loads tab, here we can specify the loads acting on the wall. If we select the nominal loads, this option, we are presented with a series of load cases, dead life, roof life, snow, wind, and seismic. In each of these load cases, you can enter axial force P vertically, bending moment, and a shear force. These forces are represented graphically here, P vertical, the bending moment, and the shear horizontally. In addition, the program allows you to consider the seismic design provisions of ACI so you check this mark and then click on the button show parameters. Here you can specify the spectral acceleration, SDS, and then the redundancy factor phi. Usually the redundancy factor phi is 1.3 per S7 for uh, buildings in highly seismic zones. For that, I have entered some vertical loads, also for life, and then in seismic, I have entered also a mending moment 75,000 kip feet and a shear force 800 uh, kips. With these forces, we're going to design this wall. In the right pane at the top, we can see here the uh, geometric information of the wall, then the unfactor loads. Here, the program calculates some wall properties, uh, material properties, and also geometric properties. Here the program calculates the maximum shear force according to this load combination and then it calculates the minimum vertical and horizontal steel ratio. The program calculates the flexural strength for this maximum axial load and bending moment for this load combination. The program calculates the strain diagram and then it calculates the forces and moments corresponding to the concrete and to the steel. With this information the program calculates the nominal flexural strength and then it's affected by the phi factor. The flexural ratio is the maximum bending moment over the uh, design uh, capacity. In this case, it's 0.91, so it's passing. Graphically, if we go to the diagrams tab, the program generates the interaction diagram. This is the nominal interaction diagram for this shear wall. And then this is the design interaction diagram affected by the phi factor. These points represent the loads, in this case, all loads are inside the usable area. 
The program also calculates the maximum factor shear for this load combination and calculates the design shear, which includes the maximum probable bending moment to ensure that the design is ductile. Then the program calculates the design strength, phi bn, and then the maximum shear ratio. In this case, is 1.06 is over by 6%. In addition, the program checks the code requirements for the boundary members. The software calculates the maximum concrete stress at the ends of the wall. If it's more than 0.2 F'C, then boundary members are required, as in this case. And these are the requirements by code uh, for the detailing. These are the minimum required dimensions for the boundary members. This is the maximum spacing um, horizontally and then this is the maximum vertical spacing, and then the minimum transverse area. In this case, the provided transverse area is 1.6, which is less than the minimum required, 1.7, so it's not passing. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see a detailed set of calculations with the most important information. This is the interaction diagram for this wall, and then in the wall strength, the calculation for all the load combinations, everyone is passing. The maximum ratio is 0.91, as we saw in the detailed calculations. So the, the shear strength calculation with the maximum design shear force, and then the ratio 1.06. This is a summary of the requirements for the boundary members. We can see that a couple of them are failing. As you can see now, it's easy to design a shear wall per the latest ACI 318. Uh, this new module is going to be included in ASDIP Concrete 5. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com and download a free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.